Our center is called uh, BioMEMS Resource Center. BioMEMS stands uh, for Bio Micro Electromechanical Systems. Uh, and our center is located at the Massachusetts General Hospital uh, within the hospital uh, facilities. We explore applications of micro technologies uh, that uh, relate to the use of cells, uh, particles, bacteria, virus for pathogen detection, cells for diagnostics, or putting cells in devices where we would actually have living uh, organs on a chip for toxicology and uh, uh, cosmetics and uh, drug screening purposes. So ideally when you are trying to develop a medical technology, device, drug, diagnostic, whatever it is, um, you would like to, to continue to test these things clinically. That's of course not a practical thing to do. So we use these model systems which are typically isolated human cells. The problem with this is human cells are not evolved to operate in isolation. They're evolved to work um, and interact with each other very strongly. So the natural evolution of this idea is to uh, put multiple cell types that belong in an organ, and not just the cells but also the features, like the micro and the nano size features of an organ that makes these cells behave like they will do in your body. So that is organ on a chip. Um, same cells, same features, same characteristics, so that we could use it as a model of a human organ. Uh, certain diseases, ideally all diseases, if you have a model of it on a chip, you can also see if your drug or your technology works on those things. And you can also do the same thing for some of the diagnostics, like whether a cancer is developing early on and so forth. So those are the type of chips where it's, uh, we call them living chips because there are cells in them. And then we also deal with uh, uh, microfluidic chips where the chip will sort cells uh, for various clinical applications. So my laboratory is focused on developing technologies where we can take biological fluids and extract as much information as we can about the patient's status or potentially use it for diagnosis. For us to do that, we use microfluidics where we can have the advantage of being able to process very small volumes, but have hundreds of thousands of interrogations of each individual cell as it travels through the device. Now my research has uh, started to go down into the path of microvesicles and exosomes. And what these are, are very tiny particles that are budded off of the original host cell. So in the case of cancer, you can have up to 10,000 of these small particles come off of a single cell per day. So what we're hoping is that by looking for these small extracellular vesicles in patient blood, that we can get a snapshot into what's going on into the primary tumor. One that's very common that uh, is well known in the field uh, in our uh, discipline is uh, circulating tumor cells. These are extremely rare cells, so we develop chips that can interrogate up to 300 million cells per second. It's really, uh, and, and then find this one rare cell in 100 billion other cells. We evolved our thinking as the field matured to understand that these tumor cells are changing what's on the surface. So they're cloaking and morphing as the disease changes. So being able to get them while they're constantly changing is a very difficult problem from an engineering perspective because your the goal line and the target keeps changing. So what doesn't change is the other cells, the blood cells. So you're not actively what we call positively selecting for the tumor cells. You're negatively selecting by getting rid of cells which are otherwise present in your body. Now the challenge with this is that you've got billions of cells and there is very few of those tumor cells. So taking a tube of blood which has billions of these events and being able to get them out of the way and leave behind the circulating tumor cells, that was a challenge. And doing that in a microfluidic device was a deeper challenge. We are always focused on problems that have practical impact in the clinic, but sometimes we have to understand that there's biology and we can do that here. We made uh, recently very good progress towards a uh, microfluid device to diagnose sepsis. So neutrophils are white blood cells that are specialized in protecting us against infections. We employ microfluid devices to look at how these cells move. We make devices to measure how precise neutrophils are. 
Recently, we started looking at the interaction between neutrophils and microbes at single cell resolution in very controlled environments. And we are finding very interesting things. We find that neutrophils cooperate with each other when they encounter a big target. We find that microbes kind of sometimes adopt strategies to defend better against neutrophils. In this process, inventing technologies to measure what neutrophils can do, we came across some very amazing things. Look at it as the discovery phase we do, and we do translation within our lab how things work, make things work, and then commercialization is really impact. Because we are in a hospital again, and we have a translational innovation group, we had a very good commercialization uh, activities over the last 10 years. We have internalized the, what I call the fuzzy front end of innovation, which is absolutely every product has to go through. It's that constant back and forth and saying, yeah, this looked nice in the patent and paper, but the reality of how to turn this into a very robust product requires many more changes, many much going back to the bench and making fundamental changes. We're doing all that here. We build a hardcore engineering facility, microengineering facility within this battlefield where thousands of patients and clinicians come to work every day. Think about the center as a crucible. You know, you're putting in a lot of ingredients, right? That's what you do in a crucible and then you do a reaction. So the, the ingredients that we're putting in here is uh, basic scientists, applied scientists, engineers, hardcore engineers in mechanical engineering, fluid mechanics, physicists, chemists, biologists. All of these are coming together to solve a singular problem. Our ecosystem, just being located in a clinical environment, has that continuous diffusion of clinical demands every day. And that inspires our uh, fellows and postdocs and uh, graduate students as well as undergraduate students. That's how it becomes uh, a clinically inspired center.